celebrities. There's a fact for you. Paired up with an expert. Well, like a girl's hands. <laughs> And a classic car. Give it some juice, Myrie, give it some juice. Their mission? To scar Britain for antiques. I'm brilliant at haggling. Who knew? The aim? To make the biggest <gasps> profit at auction. I can't believe that. But it's no easy ride. What's that smell? The clutch! Who will find a hidden gem? That's for the Art Deco, isn't it? Take the biggest oh, risk. It's half toy, it's half furniture. Will anybody follow expert advice? That's irrelevant. There will be worthy winners... <laughs> And valiant losers. No! Put your pedal to the metal. <laughs> <laughs> this is the Celebrity Antiques Road Trip. Get away. Today, the only way is antiques. With Made in Cheshire's Margie Cooper and Mr. Ream himself, Raj Bisram. And I'm well gel, cos they're on a reality star romp in the Cotswolds. What a lovely place to do a road trip. Absolutely. And we've got this lovely little car. It's a bit of a bubble, isn't it? A lemon bubble. A 1969 Fiat 500. Perfect to bomb about him with a couple of celebs, eh? I mean, apparently these two yeah. have got a bit of a reputation. Yeah, very handsome, I hear. Yeah, Marjorie. Yeah. Oh, I haven't seen that twinkle in your eye for a while, Marty. <laughs> <laughs> Talking of head turners, look at that Porsche 365, eh? Who's inside? Sam and Pete on the road, baby! Yes, Towie's Pete the power at Wicks and Sam Thompson from Made in Chelsea. I feel like we should be in the, in the hills of Saint-Tropez right now and I'd have a headscarf on. Boy, sunny, mate. We're in a nice classic car. What more could you ask for? This is the culmination of our friendship right here. This is it. I thought the tattoo was it. Yeah, I remember it, and it still makes me feel... Do you remember the fact that she tried to make you look young, so I added under-eye bags on the tattoo? Yeah, that was really out of order. No, I don't I understand just... why you did that. Because I wanted an actual portrait of you. And there we go. What a bromance. This pair of Lotharios first found fame when they appeared in hugely popular British reality TV shows. <laughs> Right, let's go antiquing. I'm going to be using my nose a lot, I think. What? I'm going to be using my nose. I think you can tell a lot about something by its smell. What? If it's musty, right, and it has this, like, smell like your grandparents get, then I think you want it. So you're going to be buying things that smell like your nan? Yeah. Well, this will be a first. <laughs> I think this is going to be a fun trip. Yeah. We've got a nice little car, I've yeah. got a lovely company. What can go wrong? Famous last words, eh? I think it's broke. <laughs> you put your foot, just press it. I'm pressing it and nothing's happening, Sam. What have you done? I've not done any. It's, a, it's an old car, they're temperamental. Sometimes it's just having a bit of a wobbly. It'll be fine. We'll give it some, some breathing space. Just, we'll have a walk, mate. It's a nice day. Let's have a walk. <laughs> Quick, before anyone sees us. <laughs> we can do about the car. It'll be fine. Just give it a breather. Looks like it's up to me to find a mechanic, then. Typical. This reality star road trip will kick off in Stroud, take in much of the Cotswolds, and finish with their items being sold at Bourne End. But first, Sam and Pete are hoofing it down to their first shop. You broke the car. That <laughs> is a great car. It's awful, Sam. It's, what do you mean? It's so cute. It's yellow. Never mind the car, get shopping. The Maltas Collective has a cornucopia of collectibles and curios inside, including the old expert. Not that he's odd. Hello! Raj! Sam! Yes, mate! <laughs> I've got a pack of cards. Yeah. OK. What's all this, then? And I'm going to get you to say stop wherever you want. Now, the card that you chose will give me an idea of what your character's oh like. My God, OK. Raj loves a bit of magic. Stop! OK, right, you've chosen this card, right? Yeah. Now, this card will tell me what you like. And what is it? Oh, no! It's a joker! Is that good or bad? <laughs> That's a good card! Oh, okay, yeah, come that on, That means we're going to have a lot of fun. Well, they seem to be getting on like a house on fire. <laughs> What about the competition? So how are you going to be? What are you going to buy, Pete? I like weird things. Weird? And I'm like a magpie. If it's shiny, I want it. You're right. <laughs> so we're looking for weird and shiny. Right, you've got your brief. Hop to it. 
Each team has £400 to spend, and it's up to the experts to guide these novice antiquers to find the best buys. So what have you got there, Pete? It's a little Yorkie. Yeah. Is it Beswick? I've been saying Beswick all my life, but I've been told by a pottery guy that it's Beswick. Producing tableware since 1894, Beswick is now renowned for its ceramic models. That looks a big piece. How much is it? It is 35 quid. Yeah, it doesn't seem a lot, does it? This sold us for 20 quid. Surely there's a profit in that. Well, that's a thought. Lots still to see, though. Stay. What are these tiny little knives? What are they? Fruit that's knives? That's fruit knives, those. Yeah, oh, are they? Nice, those. Yeah, yeah, quite nice. It's tiny. Who's is that a hobbit? A little well, pop in your pocket to peel an, peel an apple back in the day. Really? And you know why they're silver blades? Go on. Because that doesn't taste. You see, if, you, if that wasn't silver and you peeled your apple, you'd have enough to taste. That's why you can drink out of a silver goblet. Learn something every day. They're not called experts for nothing, you know. What are you doing sniffing that can? Well, I feel like you've got a <laughs> smell for oldness. Well, that's a very different approach, Sam, OK? It's not necessarily the case, OK? There's lots of questions to ask when you look at something. Is it in vogue? You know, is it the right price? Right. Is it in good condition? Yeah. And is it a genuine piece? Yeah. So, you know, I'm interested to find out, but that's, that's a, a great start. Sage advice there. What's next? In this section here... Yeah. I have seen something that I really quite like, but you have a look. Time to put your new knowledge to the test. <laughs> I already know. I think I know what it is. I'm just going to let you know that right now. Really? Yeah, yeah. Moment of truth. Abacus. Ah. Ah, uh, yeah, no. Well done. Yes. Yes. yes, yes. He's a natural. I think it's old school, and I think that it's, it's one of those things that you could definitely have decorated in your house. It's got loads of colours on it, and it's an old way of counting. Right. This is what I think it's got. It's, it's got... History, it's Georgian. Yeah. Right? So it's 18th century. The beads are they're still there. And it's, you know, overall it's 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 an unusual item. Yes, indeed, but at 280 pounds and oodles of shop left to search, best not commit just yet. What do you think about this easel? I absolutely love it. See, I was gonna ask you the same question. <laughs> I just didn't want to sort of get it wrong, but that is a favourite of mine. Me too. So I love the look of it because it looks so old, but is it old? Yes, it's got age to it. It's not actually an antique, it's not 100 years old, but it's certainly got age to it. And these would have been, you know, there were a lot of these made, but of course a lot of them either got woodworm, got damp, got destroyed because they were, you know, in studios and having them survive and having the pegs with it. Raj, you know what, I think it's got what I like to say is character. And I think character, not that I know a thing, but I think character will sell. At £95, it's easily a contender. These are fun, aren't they? I like them. Do you? They like old... The 90, about 1930s. Boxing gloves. They're good, Nick. They are. Gloves were first used in the 1700s by bare-knuckle boxers in training. What I like is they're not in any kind of... There's no rips, tears. Do you think they're properly authentic? Yeah, I do. Yeah? Yeah. They ain't moody. Yeah, they've, they've been used, haven't they? But they're not... Well, give them a smell. That's generally how you tell, isn't it? Crikey. Now you're at it. And usually old stuff starts to sort of get splits in it. Gets it gets worn on that, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, they're quite good fun, aren't they? Do you like those? I do like them. So do I. And only £68, too. We're on. We're winning now. Move on. This is the start of things to come. This is. Excitement. Yeah, it certainly is. And there's still plenty more to see. Marjorie, what about a new pair of ribbons? Fancy them? Ribbons. Ribbon. What are ribbons? Ribbon and blues. <laughs> Shoes. <laughs> Good for dancing, but not for auction. Anything else? Pete, just come over here. What right. is it? It's a pole screen that you would have used when you're sitting by the fire and you're doing your reading or whatever. You could angle that that the fire doesn't hurt burn your face. Pole screens were popular in the 17th and 18th centuries when wax-based makeup was common, meaning the heat from a fire could literally melt your face off. <laughs> what a thought. How old is that? Well, it's early 19th century. About 200 weeks. Yeah. And they've obviously got desperate. They've put a line through 70 quid and it's now 40. Well, this is my first antique that I've seen. Yeah. But you wouldn't buy it, would you? Personally? Yeah. No. Well, they... I would, I, well, I don't like it. I mean, I don't have an open fire. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but it is beautiful. Well, forget what it was used for. And... Look at that base. Listen, there is no point coming to do this if we don't actually buy an antique. Yeah. That's the general idea. Oh my god, yes! 
What have you found? I found a dumbbell. God, I really like it. So it's, it's a really do old you like one. It? Yeah, I do. I love it. I, I really like that. Has it got a price ticket on it? It's 98 oh. quid. Do you know something? I know that sounds a lot of money for a dumbbell, but actually, what a talking point that is. I know. And it's, it's different, isn't it? It's like being, you know, you see those posters, Mr. Strongman. Exactly. You know, and I the stars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Leotards at the ready. Dumbbell's name originates from the 1700s when aspiring weightlifters removed the clappers from church bells, rendering them dumb. I think let's 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 speak to the owner. Let's try and get it. I like it. I love it. So do I. Worth a chat with Linda the dealer. Hello, Sav. Beautiful Linda. Ah. Oh. What can I help you with? Now, we've seen two things that we love. The first one's a dumbbell. I mean, it's, it's a bit of iron, isn't it, really? But, but we love it. Because, you know, we're two young stallions that just like fitness. I do, because, because I feel like we get along so well, yeah. I'd like to give you 50, but I do Let, like let's it. Let's do a deal on 50. Oh, come on, Linda, let's do a deal on 50, baby! <laughs> come on! One done. <laughs> How about that £95 easel? Time to get the owner on the phone. Hello, Polly. It's Linda from the Malthouse Collective. Um, hello, Polly. I just wanted to say hello quickly. It's a lovely name you have, by the way. We absolutely love the easel. Is there any way we can sort of... we can shimmy you down to a 55? 65. 65. I, I think 65 is still too high. Is there any wiggle room? If not, do not worry, Polly, because, you know, we don't want to waste your time. Right, Sam, here you can go. And a large gin and tonic, okay? £60. I, I think, think we that's can do a good it. Price. I think we can do that. Polly, you have a deal! You have a deal, and we're gonna get a gin and tonic on me, and we're gonna <laughs> hug it out. I could do with a drink myself after that. <laughs> so, the dumbbell for £50 and the easel for £60 leaves Sam and Raj with £290. Well done, chaps. Dumbbell loaded, the easel will find its own way to auction. Now, how are Pete and Margie doing? I like all these sort of things as well. But yeah, they're all, gonna they're be all right. Aren't yeah, they? yeah. Well, it's life, isn't it? You always want what you can't have. Exactly. Do you know what? My first ever tattoo says never enough. Really? Because nothing's ever enough. Margie, I tell you what you should do. Yeah. Right? If we win, yeah. we're going to celebrate. I'm going to take you for your first ever tattoo. Oh, my God. No. I'm off. I'm off. Margie. Yeah. <laughs> Margie. <laughs> Margie. Margie. Now, there's an offer you don't get every day. This is quite cool. This is quirky. This is like... They're like fencing swords. See, I like things like that. It's weird. I don't know why you would want a fencing sword. Do you know what I mean? Like D'Artagnan. On guard! And I'll be Aramis. Fencing foils were designed as practice weapons in the 17th century, but this one was made by the Leon Paul Company, which started in 1921. What do you think? Yeah. Do oh, I look like Zorro? Suit. You do look like Zorro. Mask and hat, and so you're there. This one is... £40. 40 quid. Yeah, it's like an old... It's a fencing sword, isn't it? Yeah, it's foil, isn't it? Yeah. All right, so this is a maybe, then, yeah? Yeah, maybe, if you like it. It's shiny and dangerous. Yeah. Could be worth a duel with the dealer, Linda. Hello, my love, how are you? Very good, thank you. <laughs> you look fabulous today. <laughs> thank you so much. Honestly, radiant. He's a charmer. <laughs> Now, how can I help you? <laughs> well, it's funny you say that. It's funny you say that. We've got a few things we're quite interested in. OK. All right, the first thing's the sword or the foil, isn't it? The fencing, fencing foil. Yes. We really That's, like that. Yes, and the ticket price on that is... 40 quid. £40. Pounds. What right. are you hoping for? Well, I mean, it would be my first sword. Right. Which I think is really important. So we need to, to do know. a good deal with that one, then. See, you took the words right out of my mouth, babe. So we'll <laughs> leave it to you. You give me a price to begin with. What about a score? <laughs> you have to speak in um, okay. good I was, old I was hoping to just, this year. I was hoping to just baffle you and you go, <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> but obviously that's not going to work. Uh, 20 quid? Do you know what? I think that's quite a fair price for that. I'd like to see you make a, a good profit. Do you know what, Linda? I knew I, I knew I liked you from the moment <laughs> I met you. Now, there's another thing that I've seen. Yes. yes. It's the post screen. The yeah. lowest um, I would be able to go to with that is 35. I wouldn't be able to go any lower, so it would only be. So five. you wouldn't take a score. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, is that really, so 35 that, is the lowest? That would be the lowest. Could you not, because it would be my first ever antique, so it's a really important moment for me. I'm 32 years old and this would be my first ever <laughs> antique. So what about if you dropped a little bit more, if you could, to 30 quid? Well, should we do your age? Let's go to 32. Ah, uh, oh, I see what you've done well there. Done, um, I actually lied about my age. It's <laughs> my 21st birthday next week. Uh, sorry, off. I forgot. It's been a hot day. Ah, uh, ah, uh, nice try. £52 for the pole screen and foil leaves Pete and Margie with £348. Right, off with you two and do your best not to break the car again. Elsewhere, Sam and Raj are busy getting to know one another. How long have you known Pete? Uh, so myself and Pete go back about like, three years now. Oh. He's like my brother, you know. Oh, he, he, he might take the uh, take the Michael out of me, but it's um, he doesn't allow anyone else to, which uh, you know he's yeah, quite protective actually. No, no. And the thing about Pete is he's got a gooey centre, which is you know quite nice. Much like our Raj then. <laughs> These blossoming buddies are making their way north to Revel's Farm in Defford to find out how asparagus, a vegetable originally from North Africa and the Mediterranean, became one of the Vale of Evesham's most famous exports. Tourism officer Angela Taylor is here to explain why it flourished so far from home. Hello, Angela. Oh, oh careful. <laughs> You. Very well, thank you. Well, he was. There were over 1,200 acres of asparagus fields around these parts in the 1930s, and when the railway came to town, freshly cut spears were sent around the country as demand soared for Vale of Evesham asparagus. Is that the asparagus field there? This is. It's not what you would expect, really, No, not is it? at all. Because people often think of asparagus as a, a massive sea of green. Um, it's not a crop that's actually cut all at once. It's cut every single day because the spears grow at different times. They grow at different speeds. But it's a very short season. The English asparagus season is only eight weeks long. St George's Day, the 23rd of April, mm -hmm. and it's until Midsummer's Day on the 21st of June. So this asparagus is ready to get picked right now? It absolutely is. Do you want to have a go? I would love to. I didn't want to just dive in, no. but yes, please. Come on, let's go and cut some. Come on, run, run. <laughs> Sam obviously skipped lunch today. The variety of asparagus we know and love was first cultivated in France, where monasteries had grown it for centuries. But it wasn't until the British Agricultural Revolution in the 17th century that farmers started growing a new, wider variety of crops. And asparagus found a new home in Evesham. You cut asparagus with an asparagus knife. It's got prongs on the end. You measure your asparagus and once it's the length of the knife, then it's absolutely perfect to cut. Seems simple enough. Mind your fingers. <sighs> can I eat it? You can. Can Please I? Do. Yes. Oh, my God, here we go. It's actually quite nice. It tastes like peas. While some claim skilled growers just have what it takes to grow this delicious vegetable, others say it's the soil that makes asparagus so delicious. We're actually in a vale, so the microclimate within all the hills, obviously, uh, the sandy soil, the clay soil as well, and all throughout the Vale of Evesham is just superb growing conditions. Despite this, by the 1970s, the nation's taste for the plant was dwindling and sales fell until there was barely 200 acres left. However, in the mid noughties British asparagus bounced back with a vengeance when many celebrity chefs rediscovered their love for the spears. The the change was so profound that in 2016, the Vale of Evesham asparagus was awarded protected food name status, much like champagne. But the proof is in the tasting, as they say. Oh, look at that. This is so pretty. It's beautiful, isn't it? God, it looks delicious. And an aphrodisiac. Raj, do you realise we're on a mandate right now? <laughs> we are, aren't we? Mmm. Mm. Mm -hmm. You've done quite a few dating shows, haven't you? Mm -hmm. Do you think... After a plate of this, it would have helped you on those shows. To be honest, Raj, any help would have been great on them. The only person I walked away with, with on, a, on the dating show is Pete. On a beautiful day like today, you never know, your luck might have changed today. I think it has, <laughs> and I wouldn't have it any other way. Right. An aphrodisiac <laughs> for two best pals. Ah, get a room, you two. <laughs> While the lovebirds enjoy their meal, let's catch up with Pete and Margie. So, is antiques, is it a whole new world to you? It may surprise you, 
uh, Mardu, but I know absolutely nothing about antiques. I like the idea of finding out about things. I'm, I'm not the most intelligent guy in the world, but I do like to learn. So I like the history behind things. Like, it's yeah. not something I've ever really done before. Well, class is about to be in session, and we head south towards the village of Ash Church. On the agenda is a spot of shopping at the Malt House Emporium and its 70 vendors. Pete and Margie have £348 left to spend. Time to get cracking, you two. Some of these smaller pieces are called apprentice pieces, where people learned how to do joints and learned how to make furniture. It's nice because they've even got little bolts and things. You see, so everything's in miniature. Apprentices would practice their craft on smaller pieces before making full-size items, but master furniture makers also made miniature versions as samples for travelling salesmen. The ticket price for this one is £129. So what would you do with that? Like, what would that have been used for? If you were collecting things, it's like a little collector's cabinet. You know, say you were collecting small so things. like a little display cabinet? Yeah. Like, how old do you think that is, then? Well, I think that's got a bit of age, that. It looks, looks like late Georgian to me. I quite like it. I do like it. Do you? I do. Best not put all our eggs in one cabinet so soon. Margie, how do you think we're doing? We haven't found anything yet. Let's find out. <laughs> yeah. Are we going to win? I'm a glass ball. Oh, I think the lizard, the lizard tells you. Yeah. Yeah. See, <laughs> we are. We are going to win. We've got nothing to worry about. <laughs> nothing to worry about. Ask him if he knows where the bargains are. Ah, then how about model of a ship? Pete, you're supposed to be pirate. I like that. Are you pirate Pete? Pirate Pete, yeah, that's what they call me. Why yeah. are you called Pirate Pete? Because you look like a pirate. Well, because I look like I've been washed up on a desert island for months. <laughs> the, tr the true story of that is, when I was younger, um, I had a bit of a lazy eye. So when I was about six, I had to wear an eye patch for a little while oh, to correct it. So my, my mum called me Pirate Pete as a yeah. kid. And then I thought that I'd left that horrendous <laughs> nickname behind <laughs> until I got older and started looking like a pirate, and then it came back. But actually, that was originally, it was my mum that called me that. But the patch worked? It worked. It worked a treat. Yeah, Good. unless I'm really tired or drunk. And then it slides. And then it slides, yeah. It just goes for a walk. <laughs> um, I'm but, really getting to know you. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, talk about overshare. Um, <laughs> but I really like that, though. Yeah, no. Well, it, it's in really nice nick, and I, I'm sure there's an interesting story about the Bellum. There is. The tall ship Bellum plied its trade transporting sugar, cocoa and coffee from the West Indies and Americas over 120 years ago and now serves as a training vessel in northwest France. But with no ticket price, you'll need to speak to Vance, the dealer. Can you help? I take it this is yours. It is, Marjorie, yes, right. it is. So would it have originally been in a, a glass case? It could, it could well have been, but I think from the condition of the, you know, some of the sales which have aged, I think it's, it's probably been out, you know, in the, just on display mm. in the open air. I quite like the fact that it's aged a little bit, though. It's quite decorative, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. I think it would look wrong if it was bright white, wouldn't it, in terms yeah. of the sale, so... There's not a price on it, is there? No, so... so I mean, I really like it. If you carry away carefully today, I could do that for 55. I mean, would you take a, just a, a solid salmon for it? Just a just 50. Nifty. Do you know what a solid Nifty salmon 50. is? I do now. Of course he does. <laughs> he really is a pirate. <laughs> well, you know. Go on then, wait done. Just, wait done. silly wooden leg. Done. 50? Yeah. yeah. I think that's a good I like it. That's very kind Beautiful. Of you. Thank you so much, Vance. Right. Pleasure. So, a solid salmon, all £50 to you and I, for the model ship means Pete and Margie can set sail with £298 tomorrow. Ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Let's go, my love. Let's go. Off into the sunset. Anchors away. That's one couple done for today, and Sam and Raj aren't far behind. I don't want to be a fanboy, but my, my mum is a huge fan of yours. I don't, I don't mean to, to make this weird. I, we've only just sort of met, but and like we're stuck in a very small car together. She's going to lose her goose. They did tell me I had one fan out there. Now I know who it is. Well, now you have two. I get an autograph while you can. Nighty night. Wakey, wakey, everyone. It's a brand new day in the Cotswolds and our celebs are up with the larks. All in all, mate, I think we're actually really selling in nicely, to be honest. I mean, you look like an antique dealer. Uh, but I feel it. I don't quite think I've got the 
look of an antique dealer, but I'm certainly starting to feel like one. Hey, I, I, I get it now. I get the touch, the smell, the look, the barring. But it's also the countryside piece, the windy roads, it's the antique cars, it's the smell, it's the taste, it's the chase, you know? We're maturing, Pete. We're not young bucks anymore. We're going out there, we're finding things, you know? You've really got into the spirit of this, haven't you? Yeah, I feel great. Now, let's see what our experts made of yesterday's shopping. Now, I've heard a rumour <laughs> that if you guys win, something is going to happen. It's going to take me to a tattoo parlour and it's going to have a little one done on my person. Come again? I've never had a bigger <laughs> incentive to lose in all my <laughs> life, but this could be it. Sam seems a lovely chap, is he? Fantastic, and she never said to me, if we win, I'll, we'll have a tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> Don't give him any ideas. Anyway, there's just enough time to check out each other's purchases. <sighs> right, Samuel. That's a fencing sword. It's still a sword, Samuel. It just doesn't look that old. Smell it. No, I'm not smelling it. Smell this. I'm oh, not... God. This is real heavy today. How can you take the mick out of that when you've bought a rusty bit of metal? You can get that from a scrapyard. Maybe you can't get it because it's old. We've got this in the bag, sir. You absolutely haven't, mate. We definitely do. But you've got a lump of metal. Yeah, I know. Yeah, but it's an old lump of metal. I have a sword. You, you've got a fencing stick. It's, it's a not sword. The, it's not the same. But it, 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 just go, go away. It's go away. So I've had enough. A. Play nice. Along with the fencing foil, Pete and Margie also bought the Edwardian pole screen and the model ship. Are we going to win? Leaving them with £298 for the day ahead. Sam and Raj picked up the artist's easel to go with the dumbbell. That is a favourite of mine. Which means they have £290 to spend on the remaining three items. Pete has dropped Sam off in the historic town of Stowe-on-the-Wold, where he's arranged to meet Raj in Tara Antique Centre. But with three floors to search, he could be tricky to track down. Oops, panic over. Well, what are you doing? Well, what do you think? I'm Gosh. auditioning for Peaky Blinders. No, mate. It actually does look very good. We're, we're on the search for trinkets. I'm glad someone's staying on task. You're here now. Let's go and do some buying. <laughs> yes, if you wouldn't mind. I like this. Do you know what it is, though? Uh, not a clue, but the smell I'm getting from it is unbelievable. No, genuinely. You've been sniffing it but, again, yeah, haven't you? The smell God, it. Oh, my goodness. It smells unbelievable. <laughs> OK, well, what does it smell of? I don't know. It's like it's got like a, a spice. It smells like a spice. OK, let me tell you, it's a tea caddy. Is it? The two outer containers would have had two different blends of tea. And if you open up the middle one, you'll see there's nothing there. What would have sat in there is a glass bowl, mm. OK? And that was called the mixing bowl. So the two different types of tea would have been taken from either side, put it in there, and you'd have made up your own blend. It's all about saleability, and I don't think tea caddies are sought after unless they're particularly, particularly good ones. Well, Raj, so... you haven't smelt it, but you know what? <laughs> I, I, I believe in you, and uh, I am your pupil and student, so let's put that to the side. Let's park it. And let's keep on. looking. No chance of a cup of them. Ahoy, ahoy! Raj has spotted a couple of nice decorative boats. What do you think of those? I love them. If I had to pick... OK, I'm going to get this wrong, but if I had to pick one, it'd probably be that one. Spawn. <laughs> Come on, Raj! <laughs> After the two. Well done, you've got a good eye. Pick it up and have a look at it. It's a cruet set. It's for salt, pepper, OK? You can see the holes. In fact, if you probably take the top off, you can probably see a little bit of salt or something in oh there. Oh, my God, you can see residue! Yeah. There's residue! <laughs> yeah. One salt, one's pepper, and the one in the middle's mustard. Wow! And it's Art Deco, and Art Deco is one of those periods that is really becoming very collectible. When's that from, Art Deco? What period is Art Deco? Uh, you're talking about the... night. You know, that's probably in the 1920s, 1930s, wow. that particular piece, yeah. I thought if we could get those two as a lot, right, the, the cruet set yeah. and the boat, mm. you know, we will appeal to someone who, who likes sailing, who likes boats... Who likes mustard. There's £33 on one piece and there's 30 
Five pounds on the oh, other. That's quite a lot. Sixty-eight. I would like to get those two for around forty pounds. Okay. Forty quid. Yeah. I mean, if we had to pay fifty, right? It wouldn't be too damaging. Really? But ideally, I'd like to get them for 40. Well, actually, let me stop okay. you there, mate, OK? Uh, today is a special day, because <laughs> I'm wearing my Del Boy coat for exactly <laughs> this reason. Now it makes sense. Let's test it out on Kate the dealer. We found a couple of things. OK. OK, these two boats. We like right. the cruet set and we like the boat as well. Yeah, nice theme, yeah. Now you've got £68 for the two items, right? Right, yeah. So what would be your best on the two items? Um. We could do 50 on the two items. 50, that's a pretty good price. How about 45 for the two? OK, yeah. You sure? 45, yeah, that's happy? OK. Yeah, that's OK. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Sam, are you happy? I just can't believe what just happened. <laughs> that was like five seconds of negotiation. It's the Del Boy coat. I'm very happy. <laughs> Lovely, Chubbly. <laughs> and with the crew set and decorative boat, Sam and Raj have £245 remaining. But who knows, this time next year, you could be millionaires! Before Pete meets up with Margie, he's taking a solo trip to the village of Burton on the water, where he's stopping off at the Cotswold Motor and Toy Museum. He's here to find out about the unlikely sport of motorcycle football from local author John Hughes. John, tell me about motorcycle football. What is it? Well, it's exactly what it sounds like. It was men mounted on motorcycles playing football, really. The teams were five or six a side, racing up and down the field at 40 miles an hour, kicking the ball, trying to score goals, and at the same time not trying to crash into each other. So where did it actually come about then? Where did it all start? Well, it was said that dispatch riders played motorcycle football in the First World War, though there's no real evidence of that. It was just presumed board riders would be kicking a football around. <laughs> One thing we can be relatively certain is that the game was a product of the First World War, because during that part of the early 20th century, there was a big advancement in mechanicalization, machinery, and especially road machines, mm. cars and motorbikes. So many of the First World War veterans would have been introduced to the internal combustion engine for the first time. When the war ended in 1919, a new generation of petrol heads left the military keen to continue their new passion for motor bicycles. And with many of the pre-war sports slow to start up, the country was in need of a new exhilarating spectator sport and motorcycle football was it. Played on a regulation football pitch, the fundamentals of the game closely resembled traditional football, but unlike its counterpart, motorcycle football had very few rules. It sounds quite dangerous. It's very dangerous indeed. And that was half the attraction of the game. I mean, there was uh, high-speed collisions, there were uh, parts f falling off the bikes, crashes, sometimes the primitive bikes would catch fire. Uh, all sorts of things, really. I mean, there was even records of the bikes crashing into the crowd. But that was the very <laughs> attraction of the game. As many people came to watch the, the sport of motorcycle football as people came to actually watch the crashes that ensued during the game. It sounds like, like for football enthusiasts and people like destruction derbies, then. Oh, for definitely. <laughs> people wanted to see blood. People wanted to see crashes. But at the same time, they also wanted to see the sport of the game. So it was really um, an, an exhilarating sport of its day. Despite the risk to life and limb, by the 20s and 30s, the sport had gained real traction, with an estimated 60 to 70 clubs spread across the whole country. And as popularity for the Mad Max sport grew, so did the fans, with crowds of up to 4,000 people cheering on from the stands. And did they, did they have, like, a national team? Was it, was it just, like, a club thing? Or did, or did you have, like, an England team? Oh, yes, yes. Motorcycle football was being played in Germany, Austria, and uh, when England did play Germany, it was played at uh, Wembley. Did we beat the Germans? The English motorcycle football team never lost a game. And that's what I wanted. They should bring it back. <laughs> they should just cancel normal football and bring back motorbike football. Despite the great achievements, interest started to decline in the 50s when the football grounds where they played grew tired of the increasingly powerful motorbikes damaging the turf. Today, however, several European countries continue to play a variation of the sport called moto ball, which still attracts large crowds in purpose-built arenas. Thank you so much for telling me about it. It's been so interesting. I love motorbikes, so um, this has been an absolute joy for me. Just down the road are two lads hoping to rekindle the British passion for the sport. Moto Bowl rider Jim and his coach Ian. They've arranged a practice session for Pete 
And I hear their goalkeeper is not to be trifled with. It's a nice girl like you doing in a place <laughs> like this. We're going to play motorball and I'm goalie. Right, is, is that the outfit then? Helmet, ballie, go and get changed. Right, let's do it. Under the watchful gaze of Ian, Jim takes Pete through a crash course on riding the custom-made bikes. Oh, dear! Oh. Oh. <laughs> I didn't mean a literal crash course. I hope he doesn't hurt himself, because we've still got shopping to do. Your concern is touching, Margie. Right, enough practice. Time for the showdown. It's Cheshire's very own Margie, Catch Anything Cooper versus the Pride of Essex. Pete the Pirate Wicks. Oh, crikey, I can't watch. Yeah. Oh, he won! Crowd go wild! The crowd are going wild! Bad luck, Mudgy. Best not to give up the day job just yet. Nice footwork. Whilst they're playing on bikes, Sam and Raj are scooting their way towards their final shop. We've only bought one thing today. We've got two more things to buy. We've got loads of money. Yeah. So we've got to be really on the ball when we get there. No, I, I completely agree. And to be honest, it's the first thing I've ever actually felt like we, we, we could possibly win against Pete, because he normally beats me at everything. Although, I'm going to admit it right now, I shouldn't have worn this coat. Don't tell Pete I've told you this, <laughs> but I should not, but I am boiling. I'd crack a window if I was you. Sam and Raj are winding their way south towards the capital of the Cotswolds, Sirencester. With £245 left to spend, they're making a beeline for Sirencester Antique Centre. Very sensible. Hello, sir. Look, this is no time for horsing around, Sam. There's an eclectic mix from 80 dealers here, so let's get looking. I have no idea what it is, but I like this. It's got wheels. Wow. I like this, Raj. Do you? I do, indeed. Well, I, I have to say, I like it too. I like it a lot. It's a music cabinet. You know, it's got a little bit of bubbling on the top, but apart from that, it's in great condition. Is it old? Oh, yes. It's definitely old. It. It's uh, Victorian. It's probably around 1895. I mean, everyone keeps talking about brown furniture not selling, but that is a really nice piece of 19th century walnut. So how much is on the ticket? 100. Yeah, you see, I mean, I'm not kidding. I'd say four or five years ago, I would sell that three to 500 pounds <gasps> all day long. All day Let's long. have it. No, hang on. It, it, what I mean is, that's what they were fetching then. Now, not so good. Why? OK, because people don't want brown furniture. But I don't know why either. I'm not sure. And, I, and I'm one of those promoters that wants to promote brown furniture again because I think it's really cheap. Yeah. I think it's ridiculously cheap. So I like that. So if you like it, then I think we should definitely put it on our list to buy. Do you know what I really like about this? Yeah. It's the green. The leather, what we call tooling, the tooling, I yeah. I think it's so cool. It looks a bit royal. Yeah. So that's one thing, OK? Yes. And I've seen something else as well, which I wanted to show you oh, as well. I love the way you like that, though. That's great. I'm getting good at it. Definitely. But watch your back. The competition's walking through the door. Sam! Sam! Stop. What are you doing? I haven't played violins at school. Well, it sounds like it as well. It sounds like you've never played it. That's Barbar Black Sheep, have you in the wall? Was it? Yeah. Yes, sir, yes, sir, three bags full. It sounded like you were swinging a bag of kittens against the wall. How was your day? It was good, actually. I am now a moto baller. Well, at least you've learned something on this trip, because you are not going to win, I can promise you that. You don't think? I'm pretty damn good at bargaining now, that's all I've got to say. Do you think it's the coat? Actually, I really do. I'm going to be honest with you. I even said to Raj, I was like, is it just me or is the coat helping? Well, I don't think you've got a hoping out. We've, we've, we've still got some items to get. We've only just started in the shops today. You better carry on then. Oh, give it a rest, Sam. That's a good chap. Pete and Margie have £298 left. I'm a bit worried now. Sam looks very smug with himself. He looks to me like he might have found something special. But I can't lose to it. I cannot lose to Sam Thompson. I'll never live it down. There's a diamond in the rough here somewhere. We've just got to find it. Best get looking, then. Pete! Peter! <laughs> here! <laughs> Whenever I get called Peter, it means I've done something wrong. <laughs> right, now, uh, what do you think about that? 
The sign? Yeah, an old Victorian street sign. I love it. Cast up, do you love it? I just think... Is that a proper old yeah. iron one? Yeah, it's an iron one, yeah. Uh, obviously, you're hoping that somebody wants Chester Street. <laughs> But even if it's not Chester Street, will people buy it because it's just a quite cool... Yeah, it's, and it's big, isn't it? Yeah. Well, let's just have a look How much is it? Well, it says here, 275. 275. Mm. Could this be our diamond in the rough? <laughs> well... Well, you're my diamond in the rough, but this could be our <laughs> street side in the rough. We'll leave them to ponder. How are Raj and Sam doing? I want you to show you this, OK? Have a look at that and tell me what you think. It's very smooth. I love it. It's actually made from papier-mâché. Paper mache Yes. But I used to make that at school. Yeah, maybe well, not like, like that. Paper and stuck on. Yep. Where's the... There's a bit of wood there. No. What? That's not wood. Wow. That's papier-mâché, the oh, whole thing. it does thing. smell different. You love your sniffing, don't you? I really do. <laughs> <laughs> what I really like about it, if you, if you come to the front of it and have a look at the artwork on it, look at that. That's all hand-painted. All of that is hand-painted, and it's not till you get close up you see the detail. It's Japanese, and it's absolutely gorgeous, the work that's gone into that. Magnificent. Papier-mâché was common in the Victorian era and often used to make smaller items such as jewellery boxes, pen cases and desk sets like this one. It's beautiful. That's a blotter. Wow. I mean, do you like it? I love it. Is this ink holder? Uh, yeah, they're ink holders, yeah. Very snug in the old... Uh... Yeah, well, I think they might well be the original ones as well. Is that, have... the... that pushes the price up a little bit, yeah. Well, talk about price, 85. I think, at auction, that would be estimated 50 to 80 pounds. But I honestly believe, because of the workmanship on it, mm. it could make the top end. Time to have a word with the man in a dashing bow tie. Hello, Brian. We absolutely love this. Great. Um, I love the, especially the paper mache, is uh, is, is is a brilliant one, um, and the way it smells. Uh, <laughs> what would be your best price on this, sir? Could probably go to sixty on that Sam for you, then. yeah, if that helps. Mm. Um, how do you feel about forty? Oh gosh, that is a bit. How about fifty? Fifty. Yeah. Oh, I'm yeah. going to throw a curveball in here. Uh, maybe a little pincer movement. Um, the uh, the the music. What is the music? It's, it's a walnut nineteenth century music cabinet. Ticket price is £100. What if we do the two things um, for £105? Oh, go on, that'll to oh. help you out. That'll be great. You're yeah, a that's... lovely, lovely man. <laughs> it's, it's a pleasure. I do love the both. Let me get your money out now, <laughs> sir. He's getting good at this. The Victorian Music Cabinet for 65 and the Japanese-style desk set for 40 conclude shopping for Sam and Raj. Good work. Come on, Raj! Yes! Well done. We've... You're falling behind, Peter Margie. I quite like this. Yeah? I don't know what it is. I think it might be binoculars. Have a look. What are they? Are they nice, yeah? Opera glasses. Opera glasses? Yeah. In the theatre. Oh, yeah, I go to the opera all the time, mate. Back in the day, opera, the, the theatres were very small. And then in, during the Victorian times, the, the, the theatres became bigger and bigger. So people wanted those to look at the stage and also to view who was with who. Oh, really? Yeah. Look across. So these would be good That's if we have husband. any peeping toms at the... You can have a little browse around <laughs> up in the balcony. I really like them. They've got like a... Yeah. Got a no, the, ena the, the enamel ones are nice. The, they only fetch 30, 40 quid if they're ba basic. But if it's got a bit of enamel... It's a nice decorative item. Well, they're, I mean, they're quite expensive. Oh. <laughs> 98. Oh. Yeah. Well, maybe... Look, let's have a... If you like them, let's just see if we can... Well, I think they're just quite a, like a pretty unusual... Very nice. ...piece, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Hold on. I'll tell you what I can see, Margie. I can see us winning. <laughs> Forever the optimist. Shall we give these a little go? Yeah. See if they can get let's some money Let's just off? go and have a word with the boss. With the opera classes at 98 and the street sign at 275, you'll need more than optimism to come in on budget. You feeling charitable, Dan? My friend. Hello. How are you? Good. We've got a couple of bits we're interested in, haven't we? Yeah. So we've got the Chester Street sign, the yeah. big iron sign. We love it. Yeah. Don't we? Mm. It's, it's quite expensive, though. 
little bit. A little bit expensive. I think it's up for, what was it, 275? Yeah. And we've got nowhere near that. So I'm coming at you like Tiny Tim. Yeah. You know what I, mean? <laughs> I need your help. Yeah. Because we do really like it. So is there movement on that? To 150 for you. Is it for 150? 150. Yeah. Very generous. Okay. So fine. We're oh, happy that with, with 150s. Are that's great. fine, Dan, thank you. And then we're on to the other. And then we've got this little thing. Right? So these are the opera glasses, yeah. is that right? And we love yeah. them. <laughs> Would 50 quid buy them? I can do 50 quid. You can yeah. do 50? I can do so 50. So two are for the lot? Yeah, 200 for the lot. I'm over the moon with that. Right. Done, we, thank you. Is that a done deal? Well. That's all right. It's a done deal. Mate, what a superstar you are. A superstar with super savings. Must be the optimism. And with that whopping £173 discount, Pete and Margie secure their last items of the trip. Hold on. <laughs> Where's the car? <laughs> I see it. Let's go. <laughs> Are you happy? I'm over the moon, babe. Stellar work. Raj, I, I, I don't mean to get sentimental with you, but I'm going to anyway. I'm quite emotional. <laughs> I've had the best time. It's just su been such a brilliant experience. I feel like I've learned a lot. I know it sounds a little bit like losery, but like, I've learned a lot. So. But do you know what? Next time you walk past an antique yeah. shop, if you go in there instead of walking past, yeah. You know, we've done our job. I don't think I could have had a better expert and friend to oh, do this with me. Well, I'm saying here, we've had a great time, haven't we? And what about if you do win, you get a little pee on you? <laughs> hey, I can take you for your first ever tattoo, oh, Margie. Oh, you, no. You've taken me for my first ever antique experience. Yeah. I can take you for your first ever tattoo. Oh, no. What do you think? I don't know what to say. <laughs> <laughs> You need to sleep on that, Margie. Sweet dreams, you four. Rise and shine, it's auction day, and already the competitiveness has started. So, how do you think you're going to do today? I am quietly confident. No, you're not. You know you've lost. How would, what are you talking about? You bought a road sign and a sword. It's not a road sign. It is. It's not, it's a street sign. Hey, play nice, you two. Having already shot their way through much of the Cotswolds, our celebs are en route for a spot of online viewing at the magnificent Blenheim Palace. Hi, guys. Oh, yeah. Hiya. How are we all? The auction is just about to start, so we've got to make a, get a bit of a move on. It's God. Marge, I've missed you so much. <laughs> Built at the start of the 18th century, Blenheim Palace is one of England's largest houses and the ancestral home of Sir Winston Churchill. But who will be waving a V for victory today, I wonder? Oh, yes. Sam, how lovely of you to invite us to your... Is this one of your houses? Uh, it's this not. This is the weekend getaway, yeah. <laughs> no, it's at... we're not stoic we car. <laughs> we're, just at, we're just outside these butler's quarters. Oh, Marge, you don't let Very it. nice. That's not fair. <laughs> Honestly, I've seen what they bought, Raj, and I'd be very disappointed if we didn't win. Thanks for the pressure. <laughs> <laughs> OK. <laughs> Whilst our reunited duos prepare to do battle, their precious items have been sent south to Bourne End auction rooms, where they'll be sold off by auctioneer Hugo Lemon. Today's auction is open to bidders online and on the phone, but which of Sam and Raj's five items, costing a total of £260, does Hugo have high hopes for? The dumbbells, unusual pieces. I'm just hoping to find a client with a stripy leotard might just make 50 to £80. Pounds. Pete and Margie also bought five items for a grand total of £302. Pounds. Any favourites, Hugo? The Chester Street sign, very good quality, very heavy cast iron with the decoration on the end. Hoping to get a region of 100, 150 pounds today. Should we go for it? Are we all going to press the button? Margie? Yeah. Oh, so Ready? excited. Two, Two one. one. Wait. And we're off. First up is Sam's and Raj's dumbbell. What do you think, Sam? We, we like these, didn't we? You said earlier, I can't believe we paid 50 quid for that. <laughs> Did I? I don't yeah. remember saying that. 20. 20 pounds I'm bid, thank you, in two. 20 pounds I'm bid, in two, I'll take it. 20 pounds I'm bid, in three places. 22 oh. now I'm bid, 22, Hey, Sam, you're going. Come on, boys! 27, 27, join the circus with them. 27 and 30, 32, 35, 35, 37. Gosh! We're not there yet. And 40. Hey! Come on, a bit more. Are you all done then at 40? I'm saying at 40, all done at 40. Why would you do that? This is, see, this is what we've been waiting for. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? 
Small laughs. Right. Why would you let me pay 50 quid oh. for that? <laughs> See, I'm not, I, I, it's friction. Hang me now. Already. Hang me now. Not the strongest of starts. It was a bit of a gamble. I mean, I was hoping we might make a small profit, but I, I always hope that. OK. Time to see if Pete's fencing foil can do any better. So we both quite liked this, didn't we? We did. And it's a foil. I prefer to call it a sword. Right. Well, I think it's a foil. Sword. 20 pounds. 20. 20, anyone? Oh, shame. 20 pounds, anyone? 20, I'm bid, thank you, and two. Oh. Uh, 20 pounds, I'm bid, and two. 22. Five. You know what that is, Sam? That's a profit. 25, 25, <laughs> I'm bid. Uh, 25 pounds and a 25, are you all done at 25? Well done. Five, well done. A That's a good fiver. profit. That's a good Sam. Wish him well. A small profit puts Pete and Margie in the lead. That's not bad at all. Not bad at all. It's better than a loss. Next, the cruet set and decorative boat. This was actually my decision, and uh, once again, Raj came over and said, that looks lovely, <laughs> and I went, we've got to have it. So if, if we get a profit on this, call me Senor Thompson, <laughs> because I am an <laughs> antiques master. £30. Pounds. 20, I'm bid, thank you, and two. 22 and 22, 25. 25, 27. Come on. And 30. 32, I'll take. At 30 pounds, I'm bid, and two anywhere. Come on. <laughs> last chance. Oh, no, that's oh, unlucky. No. That's unlucky. God, that's unlucky. That was Raj. That was all Raj. I didn't even like the boat, if I'm honest with you. So it was, it, I didn't even think it was that good. <laughs> Talk about jumping ship. I think we went overboard there. Hey, I like what you've done. Pete's first ever antique is next to go. This is actually one of the most interesting things that I think we've got, because Margie told me loads about it. It's William the Fourth, isn't it? Yeah. Yes, it's William it the Fourth. It is, correct. See? £50. Pounds. £50 pounds for the panel. £50 pounds I'm bid, thank you, and five. Yep. And five. Told you. And 16. No. At £55, pounds then. Last chance in at 55 Nice profit. Well done. Fabulous work, Margie. Thank you. Pete and Margie are on a roll here. They're almost the dream team, aren't they? They're almost. They're not quite the dream team, though. We're the dream team. Can the dream team make a profit with the Japanese desk set? £50. Pounds. Lovely. Lovely. 50, 50, I'm bid, thank you, and 5, and 60, and 5, and 70, and 5, and 80, and 5. I'll take it. 80 pounds, I'm bid, and 5, and 5, and 90, I'm bid, oh and 5, God. 100, I'm bid, thank you, new place, 110. 120, I'll take. 110 pounds, I'm bid. Last chance then at 110 pounds. Congratulations! Yeah. Lovely! That's something to write home about. That will do, Raj. <laughs> that will do. Well done, Raj. Round of applause for Raj. <laughs> Next up is the model boat. It's in lovely condition, and because I'm with the lovely pirate of Essex, the actual ship is the Bell M. Dump me off at 50 pounds for it. What? 50 pounds, anyone? At 50 pounds and five and five now and 60, 60. Ooh, thank you. Yes. Five. At 60 pounds there, 65 now I have and 70. Oh. All done at 75, I'm going to sell. Small Last profits. Life, 75 pounds, all done at 75. Well, well done. done. Well, well done. done, you two. Another small profit for Pete and Margie. Slow and steady. Made a pony on that one. Yep, that pony. didn't sink, did it? Pony. Well done, Pirate Pete. We now have the easel, uh, spelt with an E, uh, E and an A, and um, this is for How painting. else would you spell it, then? With a silent Y. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hope the bidders aren't silent. 50 straight in at 50 and 5, I'll take a 50 pounds, I'm bid, and 5 anywhere. 60, I'm bid now, and 5. Sam's gone quiet. 60, last chance in at 60. Oh, oh, that's what we paid for it. 60, all done at 60. On the bright side, it's not a loss. No, it's not a loss. And I said between 50 and 70, got it spot on. Yeah, the fact but, that we paid but, 60 for it. <laughs> yeah, but the commission takes it down to... Oh, 50. thanks for cheering me up, Margie. Talk about knocking them on there down. You can't flog a dead horse. Just think that through. I don't understand. I stand for the opera glasses. We kind of spotted these, and I thought they were quite nice. I quite like them. 50 pounds. 30. <laughs> 30 <laughs> At 30 pounds, I'm bid, and 30 pounds, I'm bid, and two, 32, 35, 35, I'm bid, thank you, 37, I'll take. 40, I'm bid, thank you, and two, 40 pounds, I'm bid, and two anywhere. Darn it. At 40 pounds, then I'll sell, then at 40 pounds. Oh, that's pounds, disappointing. Internet at 40, all done, then at 40. 
think that's not cheap. that bad. Pete and Margie's first loss of the day. I'm, I'm getting like Sam now. I'm all peeved. <laughs> <laughs> it's catching. Sam and Raj's last item is the music cabinet. This is the piece de la Restance, which is uh, French, I believe, for a very good thing. <laughs> it's fluent. <laughs> 50 pounds for it. 50, 50 on bid, thank you, and five, and five on commission, and 60 on commission, and five. 70 and five, and 80 on commission, and five, I'll take it. 80 pounds on bid. Should be going a bit more. Selling then at 80. Unlucky. Ooh. They've got steel it's a profit. There. Yeah. A respectable final lot for Sam and Raj. I know we made a profit, but I would have thought that would have been one, two, five. Yeah. A profit's a profit, though. Hoping they've saved the best till last is Pete and Margie's street sign. This is a lovely thing. And you should have seen an half ever. You should have seen Margie trying to carry it down the road. <laughs> Start me off at fifty pounds. Fifty, I'm bid. Thank you, and five. At fifty pounds, I'm bid, and five I'll take, and five, and five, and sixty. 60, I'm bid, thank you. It's five, a long way to go, five, this, I think. It has a long way to go. I think so. And five. This is bad. And, and five, I'll take. <gasps> it's going up. It's a nice long way off what we there. paid, though. 85, then, and 90. Good, heavy quality one there. And 90 anywhere. Oh, sugar. 90, I'm bid, thank you, and five. Oh, who is that? I think it's still going to go. I think it's just... <laughs> nice one there. I think he's just warming up. 90 pounds going, an old house or a new home at 90 oh. and five, I'll take. Last chance, I'm selling at 90. Oh. Yeah! <laughs> <Go on! laughs> no! Oh, you rotten thing. Sorry about that. Talk about rubbing it in. Bad luck, guys. Like I was that. excited about that. Yes! Shame. Sorry. What an exciting auction. Time for some sums. Pete and Margie started the trip with £400 in their piggy and, despite some good profits, made an overall loss, meaning, after sale and fees, they finish on £331.70. Sam and Raj also started their trip on £400 and, after all costs are deducted, they made a princely £2.40 profit, <laughs> giving them the winning total of £402.40. And that small profit will go to children in need. Guys, well done. Yeah. It's, there's nothing wrong with coming second, to be honest. And, and do you know what, what my mum says to me all the time, because I never came first in anything, it's about the taking part. But do you know what we, we came away from this with? What? An amazing friendship. We said if we won, I was going to have Margie tailed on me. And do you know what, despite losing, and because I love you, I'm still going to do it. Oh. I don't think I you genuinely realise how much I love you. Oh. She's about to find out. That's gonna nip a bit. But you weren't expecting this when you agreed to go on a road trip with me, were you? <laughs> it's certainly a first. Margie, I love it. I absolutely love it. I'm speechless. It's your turn now. I don't believe it. She's actually doing it. You never cease to amaze, Margie. Has it happened? It's happened. <gasps> it's happened. Another you experience. Oh, <laughs> oh yes. 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 Oh, yes. You are a rock star. <laughs> we, are, oh, brilliant. we are now bonded for life. We are. And this is to commemorate what an amazing couple of days I've had with you. Oh, thank you. And likewise. Talk about a souvenir. It's definitely been a road trip to remember for us all. Are you going to miss me? The problem is, Sam, is that I see you every day anyway. <laughs> <laughs> now we've done it, we should actually go on a road trip, just me and you. No. We should hire a car, get a tent, one tent, I don't think we need two, one tent, couple of sleeping bags, or one, take your pick, and we go up the country. No. Absolutely not. Well, look, we'll, we'll, we'll put that in the diary as a maybe. <laughs> you can count me in. 